you say it Okay, we're ready. Blake, we'll start in the back row on the left. Dan Peck, ESPN 1067 in Auburn. Uh, when you went in the portal, uh, what was it about Mississippi State that, that made them the right fit? Uh, I think it starts with Coach Levy. Um, got to watch him coach at OU. Got to see that offense in person. Uh, for me, it was kind of a no-brainer when he got the job at Mississippi State. Um, he contacted me. Obviously, I wanted to play in the SEC also, and I heard Mississippi State's a great place. So um, it was a no-brainer. Left side, third row. Tyler Shaw with KBTX and College Station. How, how would you describe kind of um, Jeff Levy and his co coaching style so far and just kind of what, you know, kind of adds to you, you guys' team? Yeah. No, he's, he's a great dude. He's energetic. Um, he's got a lot of swagger about him. He's a cool dude. Um, but he's very knowledgeable about football and offense and, and having an explosive offense. So he, a lot of people gravitate towards him um, just by the way he is, his personality. So, I mean, he's a great guy. On the aisle, on the left. Blake, Donna Conrad, 15 ABC in College Station. Obviously, a lot of veteran experience from you. Uh, how do you feel like in these early days you've been able to kind of impart your leadership on this program? Yeah, I think at first it was tough just because I was at Baylor for four years, and, and it, it's just a new place, new people. So um, being able to build the relationships outside the facility so that when we get inside the facility that these guys trust me and they know who I am. In the back? We've we've seen transfer we've seen transfer quarterbacks in the past who have uh, who've missed spring practice. They've shown up afterward, and and it's something of a learning process. How, how beneficial is it that you got to go through spring practice with the team and you got those reps in? Yeah, um, it's very very beneficial for sure. Um, knowing that you know I get a whole spring, a whole what five six weeks of of training and going through the offense, the footwork, and everything that goes into it. Um, reps are everything, and so you know I got to, to have a lot of reps in the spring. On the aisle, on the right, like David Edelstein from WJTV, the CBS station in Jackson, Mississippi. Asked you a lot today, but I've just got uh, two more questions. One is, a lot of guys on this team are from Mississippi. You're from Louisiana, this, the South culture and football here. What is it about high school football in the South that prepares you guys to do so well? in the big time stage like this at the D1 level. And then also I'm just wondering if you could tell me about your shoes. I wanted yeah. to ask about the creativity there. <clears throat> so football in the South, uh, you know, I feel like we don't have as much nice stuff as like Texas and different areas like that. Um, but there's a lot of good football being played in Louisiana um, all around. I know in our area there's a lot of good football, a lot of good players. Um, I feel like that kind of goes under under the rug a little bit, bit of how many great players have came through my high school, through the high schools in my area. Um, there's great coaches in the area, too. Um, but in my shoes, I got uh, Shreveport and then my number and Romans 12-12 on the left. And then I got a baby picture of myself on the right with all my family members' names on it. Front row on the right. Like Eric Bailey with the Tulsa World, uh, you mentioned seeing that offense in person. Do you remember that 2022 game, Dylan Gabriel winning up in Norman when you were with Baylor? And uh, you, do you speak or get a chance to talk to former quarterbacks, Alebi, when you were making that decision to go to uh, Mississippi State? Or do you know Dylan at all? Yeah, so um, like I said earlier, like seeing it in person, that was a big deal for me. The offense is so fast, it's explosive, and I got to watch that in person. Um, no, I didn't speak in, speak to any other quarterbacks that have played under him until um, recently. I had met Dylan at the Manny camp, and we spent a good bit of time together. And he's a great guy. He, he talked about the offense. We talked about Coach Levy and different things like that. So it's good having somebody like that in your corner too. Third row, Blake. When you, when you look around the league, how, how would you rate kind of the quarterback play and the level of quarterback play um, just in the SEC right now? Yeah, I mean, obviously there's a lot of great quarterbacks in this league. Um, this is why it's the best conference. I feel like it's led by good quarterback play. Um, there's good quarterbacks everywhere, though. So, um, you know, it's a blessing to be a part, you know, of the SEC. Front row. Hey, Blake. Hey, uh, AP Stedham, AP and Kelly, as we see at Syndicated Radio. Uh, what did you learn at the Manning camp, and what can you say about the defenses in the SEC as opposed to the, your league you're transferred from uh, – Big 12. Yeah. 
Um, the Manning camp was, was a blessing. You know, I actually went to the camp as a kid, so just being able to, to be a counselor and, and get to experience that was, it was a blessing. And, and obviously listening to Eli, Peyton, um, Archie, and all those guys just with the experience that they got was, was awesome. Um, the difference in defense – um, between probably Big 12 and SEC, I feel like in the SEC they're going to test your talent a little bit and they're going to play a lot more press man um, and, and, and test your athleticism and things like that more probably than the Big 12. In the Big 12, there's there's a lot of zone coverage. You're going to see a lot of zone coverage in the SEC too, but um, in the SEC they'll, they'll test you a little bit more. On the aisle. Coach Levy talked about the closeness and camaraderie and the importance of having it for this group. How have you and your teammates been able to do that so far uh, headed into the season? Yeah, I think, like I was talking about earlier, like hanging out outside the facility, um, you know, I feel like that's a big deal because you have to build these relationships before the season. Like, you can't just go onto a field and play with somebody you really don't know. Um, so just hanging out, doing regular things like regular dudes do, I guess. Um, and just building those relationships. The back, uh, Blake. You were a you were a big time baseball player coming out of high school. You, you chose football. Are you are you finished with baseball? And uh, how did you make the decision to focus primarily on football? Uh, yeah, I would like to say I am finished. I don't. I mean, it's hard to be like I'm done with baseball. But yeah, I'm I'm probably done. Um, and then what was the next? How'd you make the decision to focus on football rather than baseball? What, what, what factors oh, okay. led to that? Uh, so after my first year at Baylor, they I went over to play baseball after the football season, and the quarterback coach was blowing me up every single day, like, come compete for the job. And next thing you know, I was over at baseball for like three weeks and then decided to go back and compete for the job. Are you amazed at the uh, weight the Manning name carries in football, and particularly in Louisiana and Mississippi? Yeah, I mean, everybody knows um, who the Mannings are. And, and like I said, like, to be able to get to meet those guys, meet Peyton, Eli, and Archie, like, it was a blessing for me. You get to learn a lot of different things from them. Um, number of Super Bowls in that room uh, combined through three of them. So it's it's a lot of good experience that I can take in. One thing Peyton has always been very proud of is it's a no-nonsense camp. It's not really set for autographs or any fault or all. Dude, was it really just pure football? Yeah, like it was. We it was funny because they told us no autographs too um, when we got there. Uh, and Peyton was actually my favorite player growing up, so I could have easily been that one that asked. But yeah, strictly football. Final question. You know, <clears throat> going into the season, you know, a lot, and your teammates had said you know Mississippi State's kind of overlooked and and you know not a whole lot of high expectations. Do you embrace kind of that underdog role um, going into a season? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think we all use that as fuel. Um, you know, we're looked at. We're we're. There's not a lot of expectations at the end of the day for us, and so I feel like there that fuels um, us in a way that makes us want to go out there and prove a lot of people wrong. <clears throat> prove like, a lot of people wrong, and you know, I'm excited, and um, we're going to use that as fuel for sure. AP Stedham, AP and Kelly, as we see at Syndicate Radio. John, what's your favorite part of playing linebacker? So you have quite a few sacks. And, uh, and where'd y'all get those armbands? That's Adidas. It's for Adidas. But uh, it's fun playing linebacker at Mississippi State. You learned, I learned a lot from the previous guys from the past year. So it's been great. Go to the back row. Dan Peck, ESPN 106.7 in Auburn. What, what have been the, the biggest challenges of – this off season with with a new head coach and, and holding the team together amid amid all the the transition. I mean, excuse me. It's uh, it's it's always a challenge when you come in with different coaches and have to learn new schemes. So I mean, it's been it's been great bonding with the guys and being able to uh, come together and learn everything and be able to you know be a family. Everybody just being closer. So it's been better. We'll go to the third row on the left. Tyler Shaw with KBTX and College Station. Just kind of going off of that, just with this transition, what, what have been the big, biggest differences you've seen in Jeff Levy and just kind of his philosophies that he brings to the team? Energy. I mean, it's, it's been great that he came in because I feel like we have more energy and it's more of a family more than just football. We all are like more 
closer together than we've ever been in our locker room environment is is great. We'll go in the back row again. I uh, wanted to ask uh, Coach Drinkwitz uh, yesterday uh, campaigned for Coach Leach to be in the uh, the College Football Hall of Fame, uh, which which I think is is uh, a, a worthwhile cause. Your memories of of Coach Leach? Anything anything you you uh, uh, you, you think of when, when folks ask you about him? Yeah, he was very funny, and he was the smartest guy I've met ever. So, I mean, Leach was a great guy. He was very funny. So, I mean, he he um. He was definitely an offensive guy, though. But he was, he was fun to be around, though. So, yeah. Go on the front row. Michael Cobble from Baton Rouge in Louisiana. Uh, I got a couple of questions. Just Is this your third head coach since you've been there? Fourth. Fourth. So you're getting kind of. Um, it was, you know, yeah. it was Knox first, then Arnett. So it was Leach, Knox, Arnett, now Libby. So, yeah. Does, it, does that help in any way when you get a new coach? I mean, you're kind of, you know, you're used to the routine of, I guess, turnover and, and kind of getting things resettled. I feel, I feel like I'm, I feel like where I'm at right now is great because we're not looking forward to another coach right now so far. So it's it's, great. it's been great with Levy coming in and being able to, you know, change the environment and being able to bring us in and have a bond with all of our teammates. So now it's been, it's been a challenge. Honestly, it's been a big challenge, but everybody likes it, and it's very – it's chill now because once Levy came in, we all knew, like, he was in for – he was in he was in it for us. You said that they stress the, the family idea of it or the closeness. I mean, what is different when – obviously, it's kind of bringing a team together. I understand that. But, like, how do they do that without forcing it on you guys? Just being ourself, having a personality, you know, having fun with the guys. We're not always li- literally – about football, like after, outside of football, we all we have like a life. So, I mean, we all have fun outside of football. We all have like get togethers. Like we'll go to our teammate house or like just go out to eat. Just do like the little things outside of football. Just just bond and just get to know each other better. I think back to that LSU game, and I th- I th- if I remember correctly, the defense kind of did their part, but the offense was off the field rather quickly, kind of wearing you guys out. Do you have a more complimentary offense now? Maybe helps you guys, you know, keep your wind a little bit longer in the game. I mean, of course, I got a lot of faith in this offense. We had faith in them last year, too. You know, it, it wasn't never a, we don't, you know, we don't like the offense, this, that. It's just they had their struggles, you know, missing pieces. So I feel like this year is going to be way better, way, like, you know, it's going to be fun this year. Left side, third row. So you guys aren't going to uh, the state of Alabama this year, but in your experience, which stadium, Brian Denny or Jordan Hare, has the more difficult atmosphere to play in? On our schedule right now, uh, everybody's saying Texas, but I don't know because I've never been there. Well, between um, Jordan Hare at Auburn or Brian Denny at Alabama? Auburn, most definitely. Why? I mean, I haven't been there since my freshman year, but it's been. It's. I think. I feel. I'm, I apologize. I, who was that last year, huh? Last year. I mean, it's. It's fun, but it's just their fans are crazy. So we'll stay on the uh, third row. Is there a particular game uh, on your schedule this year you can have circled, and you know more than others? No, nah, not really, because everybody count us out. So, I mean, we just play every game like a normal game. You know, just every week we focus on that one opponent. Opponent. So, I mean, it's going to be great this year. We just we just worry about the first opponent, This this our first game coming up. So, Do you embrace that? You, know, you said everyone's counting you out. Do you kind of embrace that, uh, you know, everyone's sleeping on you and, and just kind of the underdog? No, nah, of course. We love it. We love it. We can't wait to play and prove everyone wrong and shock everybody. Three final questions will go here, and then the second row, and then in the back. Hi. I, I just, if you don't mind, I have two quick questions. I want to ask you, first of all, uh, athletic directors, I don't know if they have a lot of ties to football players, but you have a really good one in Zach Selman. Are you familiar with uh, 
Mr. Selman at all, the athletic director of Mississippi State? Of course. There, there's probably a picture on Twitter. He was on our shoulder when he first came. Yeah. Football program. He brought in a lot of different pieces that we need that help us become a better person off the field. And it, it, it's like he he done so much that help us. So I, I feel like he's done more than enough. So I feel like I, we all appreciate him a lot. And my second question was rivalries. OU Texas bringing a rivalry to the SEC. And I asked your former team or another teammate, the Egg Bowl. Tell me about the Egg Bowl, how much it means to the school, the community, the state. It means a lot. It's like the win, winning the lottery. Like, that goes for both sides, though. Like, it's, that's for Ole Miss. If they win, it's like winning the lottery. But if that goes for us, if we win, it's like winning the lottery. So, I mean, it means a lot. But we're definitely bringing it back to Spotsville this year. Second row. What's, up, uh, what's it been like to practice across from the pace that the offense is using right now? And um, what do you think that tempo is going to look like on Saturdays in the SEC? I mean, it helps us a lot because we have faced a lot of tempo teams with some of the guys that are on defense right now from the previous years. And I feel like it helps us so much to a point where I feel like if we, uh, we're going to be we're going to be ready for tempo teams this year. Final question in the back. Uh, I'll pass along your compliments to the Auburn fans on, uh, on what you had to say about Jordan Hare. Uh, uh, speak, speaking of Auburn, a uh, former teammate of yours, Percy, uh, is, uh, is, has made the jump in the transfer portal uh, to Auburn. I w- wanted to ask, you know, w- what, is, what is Auburn getting in, uh, in, in Percy Lewis? Can you repeat it? Percy, the, the left tackle, uh, made the transfer to Auburn, former teammate of yours. You know, what, what, is, what is Auburn getting in, uh, in, in Big Percy? I like Percy. That's my dog. You know his last name, Lewis? We call each other cousins. That's my guy, though. I like him a lot. He's a great guy. Good job. Thank you very much. Good luck this year. Thank you, Hill State. We'll go here on the left side, third row. Tyler Shaw with KBTX and College Station. Uh, what's it been like uh, so far, the transition with uh, Jeff Levy, and just kind of, yeah, what's it like playing under him? Uh, it's been as good as it can be, you know, just new offense. Everybody's really adapted quite well. We'll go here in the aisle. Nope. Hang on, give me a second. What, what differences have you seen um, from, from Levy and, and, and before just with, with the team and, and, and the way the offense is? Just uh, how detailed everything is. Like he really emphasizes, you know, the devils in the details and just the smallest things that you know you wouldn't think play a big role in success, play a huge role in being successful. We'll go on the back. Uh, Dan Peck, ESPN 106.7 in Auburn. Biggest uh, the similarities and the differences between living in Alberta and living in Starkville, Mississippi. Oh, it's got to be the weather's the biggest one you could imagine. You know, it's got a lot of snow up there, frigid temperatures, like minus 40, 50 sometimes. And the food, there's the food, I would say the food is definitely better here. On the aisle? Yeah, Evan Kamiko, Pig Trail Nation. What's it been like working with Cody Kennedy, the new offensive line coach? It's been great. I mean, every, everybody on the old line likes him, respects him, and it, it's been great being under, under his leadership and learning some of his techniques. We'll go on the front row. Uh, Michael Cobble from Baton Rouge. Is that, is that like a sweater, a jacket? What are, we got like a, vars- yeah. a varsity feel to it. What is it? Uh, like, is, is, that again? is it a sweater or a jacket? I can't. Oh, it's a little bit of both. It's kind of like a stretchier, stretchier jacket. It's real comfortable. Is Adidas make it? Is that the stretch? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Uh, tell me a little bit about your quarterback. He's going to be here today. Obviously, you know we're getting to know him a little bit more. What do you? What have you seen in him as far as like giving you confidence this season going forward? I think he, he's a natural leader. He's very good at you know bringing everybody together and you know just making sure everybody's on the same page, knowing what the expectations are, de- holding people accountable. I think that's actually probably his biggest and best asset. On the back row. What does it mean to be representing the Mississippi State offensive line to be to be the selection at, at SEC Media Days uh, to, to represent the team? It's it's a huge honor to be able to represent my program, my offensive line. So I'm very blessed to be here. Right side. 
talk a little bit about the clean of the cowbells and getting acclimated to that. I don't know how many cowbells you heard prior to coming to Mississippi State as well, but getting acclimated to that. And does it distract you or do you love it as a Mississippi State guy yourself? As a freshman, it was very intimidating for even me as a part of the team, but I mean, I love it now. So yeah, it's just awesome. We'll go on the front row here with AP. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. AP Stedham, AP and Kelly, as we see at Syndicated Radio. Albert, what intrigued you about playing football, uh, being from Canada, and how much did you play in Canada? I know you played high school ball in Florida as well. How much so, I played in Canada? Yeah. Uh, I what played. Was, what differences? Oh, the difference. Um, no snow games down here. Had a, had a good <laughs> amount of those. Uh, that's the biggest thing. Uh, a lot of, a lot more people go to American games, like playing, you know, Utah Bowl, playing high school football up there to down here. A lot more attendance down in the States than up there. On the front row. Uh, Eric Bailey with the Tulsa World. When you're learning Jeff Levy's offense, when he's installing his offense, do you look a lot at Oklahoma film and how, and how do you get a trip acclimated to the fast pace offense? He wants to snap it fast. And how much of a chore is that for the offense? Well, yeah, we do look a lot about his Oklahoma film because, you know, that's where he was most recently and we could, you know, plays, you know, it's a good way to learn our plays. But, uh, yeah, the tempo that it's going to be a great asset for us going into the year because we are going to be able to tire opposing teams out and use that to our advantage and, you know, make our jobs easier and more effective. Left side, third row. What's been your favorite thing about playing for Mississippi State? I, lo I really like our fan base. I really love how like blue collar and toughness orientated the program is. Right side, second row. Uh, what have you seen from Cameron Bell and Justin Bell uh, coming in, uh, both as tight ends and as brothers? Uh, well, seen two very tall tight ends. You know, good duo to have, but you know, they work hard. You know, they're adapting to the offense well. It's great to have those guys on our team. Back row on the left. Working working this off season predominantly with with the first team is, has been a little bit different for you, I imagine, from the first couple of years of your Mississippi State career. What's been different about that preparing for a season where where it looks like you're going to be on the field a, a whole lot? Well, I just I feel like I have a bigger role on the team. Of course, I'm, I feel definitely obligated to step up and be a bigger leader. That's the main thing. Go on the third row here. What, what do you remember from previous games against Texas A&M, and how much are you looking forward to hosting them again this year? Definitely looking forward to to playing them again, get some revenge, and you know, look forward to a big game. We're going for front row here. I've been asking some of the players that play in rivalry games uh, this question with OU and Texas coming into the league. Can you tell me about just how big the Egg Bowl is, what it means to Mississippi State players playing in that game? Oh, it means the world. I mean, you know, I obviously didn't grow up in Mississippi, so I don't have the history behind the Egg Bowl like some of my other teammates do. But I'll tell you right now, it doesn't matter if I'm that I'm a foreigner. You know, it's just as exciting to me as it is everybody else. On the left side. Hi, WAFF48. I'm Camder. I'm um, just wondering, you guys aren't traveling to Alabama, the state, uh, the state of Alabama this year, but if you had to choose between Jordan Hare or Brian Denny, which one would you say is more difficult to play in the atmosphere? Probably Jordan Hare because they have a great fan base. I mean, they're notorious for being great fans as well, so probably Jordan Hare. One final question about the Egg Bowl. Do you hear it more from current students or do you hear it from their parents uh, and older alumni. Uh, so, what do you mean? Do you hear it more from the current students, the importance of the game, or do you hear it from the alumni or the older people? Uh, probably alumni and older people. They've been around a longer.